for me, um, I still sometimes find it difficult to find myself here right now. Sometimes it still seems like I'm dreaming. It can't be real. It's really shocking how a mother's case can really touch your soul. I still remember this first night when my adopted mother in Barcelona cased my forehead. That's where I realized that I really had a strong mission. I had to do something. I wasn't a witch as my tribe considered me during my childhood. I was born in a very typical village in Ghana, Africa. In my tribe, the tradition is that when a woman died during giving birth to a child, this child is considered a witch supposed to be killed. That was my case. Fortunately, my father was a leader of the tribe. He was issued to order my death. I would never know why he never took action. He unfollowed the traditional laws. He ended up marri getting married to my, my mother's sister, my aunt, who raised me up. In my childhood, definitely everything was funny. I had a um, typical stand, uh, childhood love, family love, I mean, a jungle up, a run up, up and down. We didn't have a lot of all these things we have in developed world. We didn't wear shoes. But we really had real fun. I promise you we had the most wonderful mangoes you can imagine. I didn't have toy cars. So if I needed to play, I have to manufacture my own toy car, just like these boys. Everything changed when I get to the capital city of Ghana, Accra, especially the seaport. This is where I started to see how the rest, was, the rest of the world was really far and my world was totally far behind compared to the Western world. I saw luxury. I saw how used cars were shipped to my continent, especially my country. The dream to go to Europe, to know who the white man is, get deep into my head. Of course, I try to forget about this. But the more I struggle with myself, the more complicated and the more interest it generates in me. At the age of 12, I took the most difficult unfollowed decision to leave my homeland, to leave my tradition, to leave my country. It wasn't easy. I knew very well that it wasn't going to be easy. But I had no idea how difficult it was going to be. I was almost illiterate, lack of education. I have to lose five years trekking journey, meandering my way through dead bodies and the mafia in the whole north of Africa.
he was abandoned in the middle of the desert. 46 people, only six of us was able to make it three, 21 good weeks, uh, 21 good days later. I think hell is not here, hell is over there. After four years in Libya, before the uprising, I was able to escape from that. I made it to Morocco, Morocco. I have to hide, pay a lot of money to this draft, which is really a real trap to cross the Mediterranean Sea as you can see in these images. I still don't know how to swim. Desperate like them. These images are a little bit shocking. If someone don't want to see them, you just close your eyes. But definitely, I think it's our promise to know what's happening, what's going on in the Mediterranean Sea and the North of Africa about migration and refugees. 48 good hours, I stayed in the boat. This is how you travel to cross the Mediterranean Sea to come to Europe. This is real images you will never see in the newspapers, nor in the televisions. Forty-eight good hours later, in this hell, I made it. I was so fortunate I ended up in Barcelona. I was 17 then. I was given a refugee status, the Spanish government. I was sent to Barcelona. Finally, I was able to make it. 17 years black African boy, homeless, Two good months. That was winter. Being in a city like Barcelona, feeling lonely, I had no words to express these this, uh, feelings. But a miracle happens again. After two months sleeping on the street, this woman stand in front of me. She took me up, she cleansed me, she took me home. I still remember this first night when she took me to my bedroom and kissed my forehead. This kiss really touched my soul. I knew very well that the world is full of good people. But of course, you have to seek for them. For me, the most strongest unfollowed decision is to give back what we've achieved to society. We are the most fortunate people on this earth. I consider myself the most fortunate person in the world. I'm sure each and every one of you consider yourself as the most fortunate too. It's our mission to give back society what we've achieved. I took this opportunity to set up an NGO where that was 2012. I bought 45 computers to set up a computer lab so that children at home and back to my hometown could get access to education, could get access to information, and would not fall in the trap of this mafia, the, the way I felt in this trap. The solution is down there. Since 2012, We've now, since then, we've set eight ICT labs, 19 good schools uses our computer labs right now. More than 11,000 students have passed through our labs. We can make 
we can change the story of these children. I would like to end up with a short Ghanaian code which says, the peaceful of a community lies in the same level of peace of each of its individuals. We can change the story. This case makes me think like, okay, I was, it was my choice to be a good soul in this universe. Let's be the change we want to see in our community, our country, and the world as a whole. Thank you. <laughs>